Hello everybody, welcome to the show. Today I have Neil McDonald with me and I've been on Neil's tours which are part of the megalithictour.com which we'll advertise again at the end of what you do. You take us off around the country or other countries to look at megalithic sites. Um, thank you Neil for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Well we thought we'd talk a little bit about the lockdown and perhaps what oh, we yes. virtual development or advisement that kind of thing so neil okay. tell me how's your lockdown going well first of all i want you to notice that i've had my hair cut oh yes how did you get you that mentioned it you know i went to preston town center to tony and guys and they had a they had one place left so they've done a good job you had to sit outside yeah. and they had a two meter long hair um players You're and they've done a good job of it do you like it what if they accidentally cut your ear off obviously they didn't that's great no they did a good job yeah so i was out in the streets two meter long pole excellent because this is like the first day of the ease down so i suppose they're allowing that kind of thing to happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did it myself really yeah. <laughs> you had me oh, going <laughs> <You're> so gullible <laughs> you've done a fantastic job maybe that's something to take up of it could be it could be a sideline yes a sideline megalithic tours and a bit of a haircut megalithic megalithic haircuts yeah <laughs> Make it like the ancients <laughs> <laughs> so now that you've done some uh, of your own self pruning on the old hair do you feel better mm -hmm. in yourself Absolutely, Betty. Yeah, yeah. You, you. The, the, um, the lockdown. Terrible for some people. Different for other people. But uh, I didn't have a good one. I've got to say, I did not have a good one. I mean, it was. I think I spent a long time with Churchill's black dog. To be honest with you, and Dark Night of the Soul. <laughs> it was bad. But. Um, down in the valley is not a bad place to be if you're going to start a journey, is it really? That's where all spiritual journeys begin. So, um, to go upwards. I think it became upwards, absolutely, yeah. Climb out of the valley and, uh, and uh, learn your lessons, basically, I suppose. But um, I think we actually had a discussion, didn't we, at one point? Anyway, we talked about connecting with our Christ Centre. And it... it and I think when you're down there, it's what you need to do, isn't it, really? And, and uh, well, I certainly did. And to me, it's the, the Tithra, the, uh, the central, you know, the Kabbalistic tree. It's the centre of the Kabbalistic tree, the, uh, the pillar of equilibrium, the middle pillar. And right in the middle of that as well. So it's uh, dead centre. And it did me a lot of good. It really did. It just changed things altogether straight away. All of a sudden, I became optimistic and um, it cured me, really. It was a wonderful thing. Because, <laughs> obviously, for a lot of people, they wouldn't know how to do this kind of thing. And a lot of people want to try and work on themselves, but have no idea where to go or you know, need guidance. So maybe you could perhaps explain a little bit more about that? Well, absolutely. Um, when everybody has their own method of... Um, Meet, meeting with a particular god i, I kind of I, I like the idea of uh, uh gnostic belief but I'm not i'm not a an actual gnostic but the idea of creating your own relationship with the divine and uh, and that's what i've tried to do over the years but I, i've used the kabbalistic method hence to talk about the kabbalistic tree um the the, the tiffin again is halfway down between kokma which is god and malkuth which is this the uh, the earth here and it's called they call it the son of kokma and the father of malkuth so it's right in the middle and that's your and any exoteric belief systems can't rise above that so it's kind of your way through you know the difference between exoteric and esoteric where exoteric is like a normal belief system and esoteric is like the hidden or the occult the uh um, ancient wisdom teachings so that's your way into the divine really and I mean, there's also many other ways to do it but that's the that's the one that i've used 
Um, it's only uh, it's, that's only what can I say? The so God. Okay, <laughs> we're going to talk well, about God. Yeah, and um, we don't mean yeah. God standing in you know an old boy with a beard sitting up there in the heavens. It's whatever you think. Your well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the Old Testament um, uh, called God Lord. Okay. Very, very, very bad translation because the revised um, edition called Jehovah. Now, that's a lot better, really, because the actual name of God was uh, Yadavave, the Tetragrammaton. So, I am. And I am. Exactly, yeah, uh, I, yeah, it's, which is, um, yeah, it's, it's, so Jehovah is just putting the vowels in between the Hebrew four letters. Yeah, it is that which was, that which is, and that which will be. So it's that, it's not her or him or her or a person, it's that. So what you're looking at there is, it's what in the green, the tablet, the Emerald Tablets of Hermes called the Prama Materia. So it's kind of everything that's around us, uh, inward, outward, everything, the table, the computer, the chair, the sky, the trees, everything is like a different shape of that parameter, parameter materia. That was the kind of idea of it. Um, so that is one, one aspect of God. It's, it's, you've got like, the message of the gods, so you've got um, Hermes and Mercury and Toth for the different traditions. So it's not really the, they were they're the, the gods of magic, aren't they? But they, but they weren't really messengers for the gods. They were messages into this prima materia, this substance. Um, they, so they were kind of not a message, but um, can't think of the word. But they would move the into that prima. Hmm? The energy and the force of what it is. Yeah, a, a force into into they said this prima materia to change it. That which is, I mean, all magic really is changing the prima materia. So if, you, if you've got uh, any magical ritual, as you will know, it's just the idea of concentrating the thoughts down to one particular place. So you, you're entering whatever thought you've got and try and, and try and focus it into the prime material to make some sort of change. Like you would have a mag magnifying glass, the sun's really hot, but if you put a magnifying glass and over a, a leaf, it'll set leaf on fire. So that is, that is a ritual. The ritual is magnifying that, forcing your attention. Um, but it's that is all, but those three, uh, or that aspect of God represented by those three, by those three gods are only a part of the deity, but it's the deity, part of the deity that you can use. So if, you, if you're looking at like the, the Egyptian tradition, where they say they've got loads and loads and loads of gods, well, they haven't really, they've just got one god, with lots of different aspects to it. Like, for instance, yourself, you're a, a daughter, you're a worker, you're a friend, you're a, an owner to your dog, you're a customer if you go in a shop, but there is only one Debbie. So what, we're, what I'm saying is I deal with that particular aspect, which is the magic aspect. And um, that's the, uh, the hermetic tradition. And the hermetic tradition is very much associated with the tarot. And the tarot is the tool. The tarot is the tool system, really. Because some say the tarot came from the Egyptian system, uh, you know, the Book of Thoth. Uh, the, it was uh, originally devised out in the ancient Egyptian times, and it's just come through over the centuries. I think it was rediscovered maybe medieval times. I, I'm not particularly sure. Well, there are different ways of interpreting the tarot. I mean, the, the history of the tarot that I that I kind of think's right, but I, I don't know it's right. You're, I mean, I know that the Egypt, that I've heard that many times as well. That could equally be as right, but I, I think it went back to um, the libraries of uh, Alexandria, where people would the uh, adepts from all around the planet would meet. And the adepts from adepts from all the different traditions, or the people who who followed the the ancient wisdom teachings, and they would meet in Alexandria, uh, which which the, the library started in two eighty 
3 BC, uh, the Pharaoh Ptolemy. Tol 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 yeah. So, yeah, mass massive, massive place. And they, they used to meet there and discuss the ancient wisdoms. And then that moved after the, the, the libraries were burned um, by 640 BC with the Islamic invasion of, uh, it was the Caliph Omar by then, between the, the, the end of the Roman Empire and 640 AD. Everything moved to Fez, which was then the scientific, scientific and therefore spiritual, because then it was the same thing, um, the capital of the world. Morocco. Hmm? Yeah. Morocco, yeah. Okay, I'm just checking. Yeah, Morocco, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh. And it was at that point that they decided to come up with a method of writing down the ancient wisdoms in a form that everybody could understand, for one, because it was going to be in pictorial form, and two, that it would go straight through the conscious mind into the subconscious. So anybody who didn't have the teachings by right should be able to just concentrate on the tarot and learn the ancient wisdoms through the subconscious and and then it went underground it was in the ancient mystery schools for a long time and i think it was discovered by eliphas levi eventually in the mid 1800s and he brought or it wasn't discovered he, he brought it out of the mystery schools and started teaching it and then you've got uh, arthur wade and mcgregor matthews and uh, Blavatsky and they all started learning and teaching the tarot themselves from there so that's my that's where I think it came from but my actual um, teaching method came from a guy called Paul Foster Case I don't think you've ever heard of have you heard of Paul Foster Case? Well I know a little bit about him um, so I, I, all right. say, I know he's an American and, and that yep. he's the founder. I knew him as the founder of the Asia's Wisdom School, but I know he's also a founder of another one. I don't know how you say it. Builders of the and Aditum. The Aditum. Okay, so I Builders of the Aditum. About him. The Aditum. Yeah. Okay. Well, so Paul Foster Case was. Let me think. When he was born in New York City in eight, 18, 1884, died in. Eight, uh, 1954. He was a, a high grand. He was a high Freemason. He was also the Grand Master of the Golden Dawn for the whole of America and Canada. Then, in 1922, he left. He resigned that job and started his own mystery school, and that was the builders of the Aditum. The Aditum is the the inner. You know, if you got the, the the temple and they got like one the inner place of the gods. That is, that's the Aditum. So like the Holy of the Holies? Yeah, the Holy of the Holies, but his Aditum is your own inner Aditum, your own Holy of Holies, so you're building your inner sanctum. So that that's um, that's where that's... Uh, yeah, that's that's Paul Foster Case. Amazing guy, and, I, and I've and i been following his teachings for many years. Obviously, there's many other ways of learning the Kabbalah and the, and the Tarot, but... I love his teachings. I was led to it many years ago and I, and I stuck to it, even though I have to say. That's what I, I like about this kind of thing. There are many, thankfully, in around that period, many teachers started appearing and coming out into yeah. the public for those that want it. You know, they weren't, you know, it's not rule and, uh, you know, you do it this way. It's for those that want it will come to it. And thankfully, there's many different ways of doing it, but they're all really teaching the same thing. Absolutely, um, yeah. In a slightly different uh, take or in a different order. So, did he design yeah, because, his own tarot deck? Sorry? Did he design his own tarot deck? Possibly. He did, yeah. Um, it, it's based on um, the Rider right Waite Pike, but it's with lots of details added in. With Because the Rider right Waite Pike is a little bit like they, they've taken away certain triggers. So the, the BOAT, BOA bolted pack is with lots of triggers in it, if you know what I mean. It's because, it, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is, basically. A bit like the uh, Alistair Crowley's Foth one. He, his is slightly yeah, different. that's a, His has got lots of what you call triggers in it as well. Like absolutely. Yeah, because, well, uh, Alistair Crowley was a terrible master in his own right, wasn't he? He's a, 
I tried to read his tarot books, but hard to read. Yeah. But uh, I managed to get through um, things like the uh, the, um, uh, the Kabbalistic. Um, oh, what was the Kabbalistic? I can't remember. Now. I forget it. Crowley by Wade. Was it Wade? No, um, McGregor Mathers. Oh yeah, there have been th so many things in in the past. I'm trying to think of uh, oh the mystical Kabbalah. Oh. That's all right. That was um, what's she called? Unfortune. The unfortune. Yeah, that was. I thought that was hard enough. And then I went on to. I thought I'll try Crawley now. No, no, no. Because I think he tried. I think he wrote in a way to confuse you anyway, didn't he? That was the. I think he did that on purpose. Yes, yeah, because he really wanted you to work at it yourself, which is, I think, quite true. I know. It's there for people to learn from, but it shouldn't just be given to you. Here it is. Here's the answers. You should really be pondering it and working on it. So that it goes, like you say, said earlier about it going past your consciousness and into your subconsciousness or wherever it is. Well, abso absolutely. Yeah, because that's where the work's done. But um, I suppose the, the, if you look at kind of the anatomy of the, of the tarot, um, then just to explain what, how I see it, it's going back again to the tetragrammaton, the four letters, because um, that's what it's all particularly designed by or around. So you've got those four letters that are given four worlds. So you, the first one is the archetypal world. Uh, the first letter represents the archetypal world. And in the archetypal world, you can, you, you've got some sort of all root ideas or notions. So you might have, I don't know, like a piece of meat so you think, well, I really could have that piece, read that piece of meat into two pieces. How on earth am I going to do that? They see this is the process of, of magic as things progress. Second one, the creative uh, world is where ideas become more specialised. So then you think, I know what we could do. We could all we could get something very sharp, and we will, and we might be able to cut it. And the fourth letter is, um, do you like this now? Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, making yeah, it go on. Third letter. The third letter is the formative world. So you think, oh, I know what we'll do. If we get a big long piece of slate, so or now it's a big long piece of metal, and put a handle on it, we'll be able to cut it. And the last letter is the material world where you actually make it. You stick it on the table and so there's a knife. So, and that's, that's creation. That's the sort of the, the way that so that is the, the primary material you're working through from a notion right through to a physical thing that exists and if you look round at uh, everything every single thing has gone through that process really hasn't it that's been made now i've got a building site just here next to me and i suppose at some point somebody thought well that quarry's been full for 20 years would it be great to have some something on there that people can use so somebody said well Let's have a little, build a little estate with shops and houses. Okay, I'll draw it. And now they're actually building it. So it's magic. Yeah, because as you say, everything is a process and magic is Everything's a process. A process. Everything's magic. It's just a case of doing it. Yes. And, and the magic about magic is that it's the will going into that idea that then drives it along. Absolutely, yeah. So the idea is that if you can pinpoint your... If you know there's something you want, or even a, a basically a, a broad idea, really, that you can focus on want something of that broad idea, then you should be able to make that happen. And I suppose the more adept you beget, you become, the more you can, you're supposed to be able to make things sort of occur, really, aren't you? But in, in the tarot itself, you've got, you've got the 10 sephiras, you know, going up the Kabbalistic tree. Uh, and each, is it sweet or... Not sweet, is it? Each type. What's it called? Suit. Suit, not sweet. Suit. <laughs> Suit. You're thinking about your dessert for your after your dinner. <laughs> oh, I don't have any. I wish. I had all those magnums from Morrison's yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I had them all. And in one go. Oh, God. Yeah, only one go. Yeah, let's mix them together. <laughs> anyway, so right. Uh, so those are the the ten in, in each in each of the sephiras. There's the ten aspects of creation going up the tree. But it's not those that I work with. I work with the major arcana, or the uh, which is the those picture cards from naught to twenty-one. So there's twenty-two of them, and they've all got a Hebrew letter and number. And it's that that process. And I suppose everybody who's listened to this will have heard of the the journey of the fool. And it's those major arcana cards really that 
take you through it. Because that's you can even put them in a circle. Mm -hmm. So you can even put them in a circle and work around them that way as well. Oh, I was because, about to say, uh, it's like a story, isn't it? Because you start off with the fall and it's a mm. development through the cards and at the end, hopefully, you've become the universe. But it's like, um, yeah. and it's not just a story for yourself, it's a story of how everything's created, which is what we're discussing from prima materia to the, the finished product. But things are never finished because exactly. then the cycle starts. Well, yeah, the, the, yeah, it is. It, it's a journey that you go through. It's a spiritual journey as well as a physical journey, blah, blah, blah. But it's, uh, they say you start in the valley, which where we've all pretty been, pretty much been, and they say that you, you, you get to the mountain, but then you go down into the valley again, but your next valley is never as deep as the previous one. And then you go up, then you get to a higher peak, and it, so it's kind of like, like that, really. So that you never go back down to the start. <laughs> it did feel like it a couple of weeks ago, I've got to say. And then end up right on as high as you can possibly get. Because you can get stuck in certain parts of the little valleys as you go up and down. And, you know, mm. it's finding the incentive to move yourself on. And sometimes with, with this major arcana, it, it's showing you the next stage, isn't it, of what you're aiming towards. Well, it is, yeah. It, definitely it is. And you can get stuck. And... Personally, I was, you know, and it, but it, sometimes it's getting down in the in that dark valley, the dark night of the soul, that it is the kick that you need to get you going again. And maybe this will happen to a lot of people. Maybe they will use this as an incentive to start to start on their next spiritual journey. And I'm hoping it will be because the way things have been, I think we need it. Well, I think this lockdown has woken lots of people up or made people start wondering, well, what is all this that's going on? What's happening to me? And maybe they're all a bit confused and need a little bit of guidance. So if they did get a tarot deck, it, it'd be something perhaps they'd meditate on or look at each picture. And like you were saying before, if you look at it, you know, you don't get the answers straight away, do you? But it's a help. It's um, a handy tool. Absolutely is, yeah. I mean, they say you're only supposed, and it's the major arcana, I think, will be the ones to look at, just work yeah. your way through. But they say to look at them for five minutes, no less and no more. Uh, so, because by that it's going to, but that, that's my teaching, but that's my teach that I was taught. But, um, so, but that doesn't look very difficult, is it, really? <laughs> you know, you just get one card and look at it for five minutes. You know, there's a lot more, there's a lot more difficult things in the world to do. I think even if people do, as long as they got the, because obviously there's lots of tarot decks that have been just written for, drawn just because they look good. So you've yeah. got to get one there. The I would say use, yeah, I would say use a right away pack and uh, work through maybe one, one, one major arcana for a day. Uh, just look at it for five minutes. Don't think about, don't look when you look at the card, don't think about it. Don't judge it. Don't translate it don't say oh look he's doing this he's doing that just let it go straight into your subconscious try not to think anything and then go on to the next on the next day and, it, and you, you know something it's going to trigger something off in you i really believe that because i think some people have over the well i think for a long time now misused them for fortune telling when they're not really they're, mm. they're a, a teaching tool like we were saying um, yeah, you're not getting them to go and find out whether you're going to meet your next partner or get the next job or things like that. This is to help you develop yourself because the important thing is to develop, like you were saying, bring yourself out into your true self, work on your spirit, your soul, and your willpower. Mm. And and these are guys to help you do that, not to tell you whether to. I don't know what, what people ever do with their tarot cards these days when they ring up the tarot lines to get their fortunes told. It's not necessarily mm. about that, is it? No, it's not. I mean, the, the tarot was a book, basically. Um, and all they've done is they've taken the, the binder off the side of the book, made it into playing cards, and now they use it as a divination method. Uh, that was not the idea at all. No, no, it literally was a very, very serious way of passing on the age, the ageless wisdoms to the next generation. It's kind of, um, I mean, I'm sure that there would be such a, they would inspire people to, you know, for fortune telling and all that sort of thing. But that's not what they're for at all, no. And I think for a lot of people, they might not realise the fortune telling, that's like an exoteric way, like you were saying about earlier, mm, yeah. that, you know, this world but to study them is the esoteric way. 
Absolutely, yeah. And it, it's when you start studying them as well, it, it, the world of the tarot opens out in ways that you would never, ever, ever understand or never believe until you studied it. And there's a tarot tableau, a tableau that you can put three cards together to do certain small journeys and uh, the numbers that you can use. And, and they're, all, they're all related to a specific Hebrew letter as well. So it, and so it's really tied into, into the ancient teachings. But it's a massive subject. And I think maybe we could, if you, if you wanted to, just maybe do one of the keys, do a few of the keys you know, on a different video what do you think yeah okay we'll do that yeah that'd be a good one to do yeah um i did want to ask you because you brought up about the gnosticism uh you know if people were interested in gnosticism maybe you could quickly or you know not quickly in your own time explain what gnostic, gnostic views are well i, I the, there are people that are asked actual gnostics but um i don't i'm not part of any organi gnostic organization but you look you go if you go back the essenes were gnostics weren't they so and um, yeah, so there's been a tradition of Gnosticism that goes back into times where we were never even, you know, back into infinity. And there are, there are even families now that are part of that lineage of the Rex Deus families. But um, the idea is that rather than having a, a person being in charge of the religion that says, okay this is what you're going to believe these are our teachings bloody 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 blah listen to all of them and do it gnosticism is your own it's, it's knowledge the name nothing is knowledge so you you work on your own connection with the divine and build up your own personal belief system that's not being given to you by anybody else because it's such an important thing to to uh, have your own belief system and connection so why let somebody else do it for you? It's like, so, well, I, I'm not, uh, I'm okay because I went to church and the vicar or the priest or the, the rabbi did this and that and that and that. And so that's that sorted. But it isn't really, is it? <laughs> I don't have to do it. He's done it for me. And so it's nothing really personal then, is it? Which is what it should be a personal connection, a personal relationship with your God or goddess or whatever it is you want to believe in. Well, absolutely, because we are all part of the divine anyway so if we we and if we're going to move on in this learning classroom thing we have here which i think it is it's a school so if we're going to uh, learn our lessons then those are those are where our lessons are going to come from and if we fancy going through life and not learning anything and not moving on at all it's a waste isn't it well we are lazy actually aren't we <laughs> Oh, well, I am, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. You've got, yeah, you, and you, you do it. But I think sometimes you will move on and get to, you'll move up, um, you'll learn your lessons, but then it, it, maybe it's better to rest for a while before you move on. Or maybe I'm just making excuses no, for myself. No, that does happen. It, I've noticed it myself in my own path and with other people. You suddenly, you've got to a certain level, you've got to digest it, haven't you? You've got to take it in. And when it starts getting stagnant, and you'll have the will to want to move forward again. Something happens, doesn't it? You know, either new knowledge yeah. comes or someone gives you a poke or, or something gets you going again. But it is, yeah. okay, doing it yourself, you've got to push yourself, don't you? Yeah, and I think it, the other thing is that if you do learn something spiritual, you, you, you've gone through a spiritual experience, it takes a long time for that spiritual experience to become part of your person it's got to become part of you hasn't it there's no point in learning something if you don't um make it part of the way you are and it, it sort of takes a little while to actually sink into your into your psyche and every time that you do this i think you become a different, another person well i don't know you know, i look back and i don't know that person who i was months ago never mind years ago <laughs> so who was that what's all that about <laughs> weird isn't it yeah and the god knows what i'll end up being like at the end <laughs> but you know a lot of people want things to stay the same you know i remember the saying when i was a teenager the leopard never changes its spots and i used to think but i don't want to be the same person i knew deep down because you, you have a calling for this don't you and i knew yeah. there was more to life than that 
you know and if you want to do the same thing throughout your life that's fine and you know good good on you i'm, I'm not putting you down or anything but it's not my way i can see there's more to life mm. than joe blog yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah i mean it, just because i have to say just because i do something i mean the one thing i'm not is evangelical i'm not gonna i have no interest in telling anybody what to do that's part of sort of the gnostic point of view as well i suppose because i don't want if i if i say something to somebody and then they say well, i don't believe you oh, that's fine you know that's good it's all right <laughs> but this is why i wanted to do these podcasts during this lockdown for people that do want to do something but don't know where to go or, you know these are just little yeah. encouragement things to hopefully to set people off and find a way that sorts out their lives and puts them on a better path well i think we're going to need it aren't we i mean things are pretty strange out there at the moment i who would have thought what's happened would happen i mean we were on a megalithic tour down in, in glastonbury and then we went to a bread or the sort of different sites and suddenly bang locked up gone and we had to go home and isolate it's like where did that come from because you was actually like you say you was on the tour you was at the hotel wasn't you you come back from your day trip and they were saying to you no restaurant or something wasn't there you yeah were, we were we were in the hotel in glastonbury and i had a shower and came down and they said oh, we're closing at nine o'clock we're in lockdown what what what, what, what? i got a minute <laughs> well, i went up for a shower so we, we had um we had uh, we managed to get to the italian for the night which was fantastic and i went into the the King William pub in Glastonbury. Strange that King William. No, I won't go into that one, should we not? <laughs> <laughs> not now. <laughs> I'm sure people will know what we mean, but yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we'll move on from there. Yeah, and that was sudden. And then, yeah, and it, the amount of control that's being influenced over people, it, it just isn't right. And I don't know where it's going to leave everybody. Mm -hmm. The amount of fear as well. Fear is such a, it's evil really. The opposite from of love really is fear, isn't it? So everybody's walking around terrified. And it, it's people need a way out. And, and that's what a lot of this teaching is all about. I, I do direct some people that maybe aren't interested in the teachings is go and watch the Star Wars movies. And you know, like Yoda used to say, fear takes you to the dark side. Um, oh, yeah turn it round people are yeah people are on the right so you can feel it when you you can feel it when you go out to the supermarket you know it's there there is fear in the air and it, it's i just hope it it filters out itself because it's not healthy yeah it does feel like we're in well we are in interesting times and i'm, I'm really not sure where things are going to go but then at the same time i'd like to think this is perhaps a changing point for people and maybe humanity is going to have some kind of wake up call or whatever or for those that want to wake up this is an ideal opportune moment but you're, well yeah sorry, go sorry. On. Sorry, go on. Say, yeah yeah you're right as we said right from the beginning once you've been down in the valley the valley of fear the dark night of the soul that is the time that is an absolute opportunity to grasp hold of your spiritual side and and go on a, a wonderful journey it couldn't be a better opportunity. And talking of journeys, because obviously your tours all had to sort of, <laughs> many of them be cancelled because of what was going on. I was supposed to go to France on the Cafar tour with you. Yeah. But you've set up a new tour list ready because uh -huh. it's a freedom tour. Um, so you're going to start running your tours again soon. If people were interested in coming one of your megalithic tours, where would they go to look it up? Simply on the, the website, megalithictours.com. I've put all the uh, the new work from the 1st of um, August. So I've still got a couple of months for things to settle down. And hopefully from the 1st of August, I'll have a timetable until the end of the year. So have a look and please do come and join us. We do have some wonderful times, don't we, Debbie? We do, yes. I'm up with, I'm with you in the summer. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm yeah. having a little look at your Knights Templar one. Um, that you, I think you're going to do in November. And I think we should do oh, a, yeah. a show one day on the... Templars, if that was okay. Um, That's a thought. Yeah. Give us some other subjects if you ever want to hear what anything else that Neil or I could talk about. But um, I'd like to thank you very much for this uh, first about hopefully many shows, and we've got some ideas for other ones. So thank you very much, Neil.
and uh, stay on the line while I switch us off. Um, people go to Neil's website. I have my website, debbie-elliot.co.uk. And thank you for listening. And thank you, thank Neil. Thank you very much. Thank you.